Last night's episode of Star Trek Discovery, Sebus Passum, Parabellum, was the first half of a two-pair episode. And the setup was a little tough to parse. What we can tell after watching this thriller, an episode jam-packed with things happening every moment, is this it's pretty clear what's working on Discovery up to this point, and what's really, really not. Parabellum episode's title is a perfect encapsulation of Discovery's latest installment. In Latin it means, if you seek peace, prepare for war, and the episode delivered war and peace in equal measure. Advertisement continue reading below Passam opens with a stunning space battle between the Federation and the Klingons. While the exterior shots were a sight to behold seriously, IDID and Tino Star Trek space battles could look so great, the drama of the actual battle on the bridge fell short. It's pretty clear to see what's working on Discovery up to this point, and what's really, really not. The entire scene had a weird disconnect. In space, things were blowing up and people were dying, but on the bridge there was no visible evidence that anything was happening except for one crew member telling us the shield percentage every 20 seconds. No one seemed particularly injured or worried about what was happening. On other Trek shows with less stunning visuals, they'd blow up a comms panel and show some physical human and or alien toll, but the crew just stood there while Lorca barked orders. It felt like a space battle half-realized. After failing to save a Federation ship, the USS Gagarin, from the Klingons, the Discovery jumps away from the battle, and soon we learn that the jumps are starting to take a mental toll on LT. Stamets he mistakes Tilly for the captain. Meanwhile, Lorca is briefed by Starfleet that the Klingons' cloaking technology, now freely handed out to Klingon houses when they pledge fealty to house coal, is decimating Starfleet and the Federation is desperately searching for a way to track cloaked Klingon ships. Sounds like an away mission is in order. Bringing Balance Basum is a breakneck episode that involves every single major character we've encountered so far except VOQ. Like any good two-pair episode, it raises a lot of questions. It also raises a lot of confusion along the way. First up is Planet Pavho, an angelic place filled with a sonic resonance emitted by every living organism on the planet. As explained by Michael Burnham, it's Starfleet's hope to turn that naturally occurring sonar into a means to track Klingon ships, much like hunting for submarines in the deep. Advertisement continue reading below in its first few scenes, the away mission exudes classic Star Trek. The audience is given some techno-babble voiceover that explains how this planet might help the Federation, Burnham, Saru, and Tyler deliver some friendly officer banter, and the team eventually comes across an alien life form that they weren't anticipating. Like I said, classic Star Trek. But from this point, when things are at their most promising, Discovery fumbles the plot. The show briefly revisits Burnham and Tyler's budding romance with dialogue so wooden and cliché it was actually painful to watch. There's also a moment where Tyler jokingly considers prolonging the war so Burnham doesn't have to go back to prison. The entire scene was bizarre. Then, during the away mission, Saru mentions that the planet's constant ringing is actually painful, so painful that after spending a day trying to learn this shapeless life form's language, he pleads with them directly to give him relief. The being appears to enter Sarah's mind and does something. We're not exactly sure what, because the next day Ceres decided to abandon the mission and just stay on the planet. Realizing their mission is now in jeopardy, Burnham and Tyler hatch a plot to distract Saru while Burnham sets up to broadcast to the USS Discovery using the crystalline transmitter. Why did Saru not destroy this instrument when he destroyed the communicators I have no idea, 